So, the MMA fighter. Let me get the uh, link to Mark's site also. Da, 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 da. There we go. Okay. So we'll go with zoom out a little so you guys can see what I'm grabbing. So we're gonna go with some of this, some of that. We'll go with some of this guy. And we're gonna need a white. Okay, and then some kind of bluish tone to desaturate, right? So, something like this. Okay. Good evening. A lot of white. We need a lot of white. And then a bit of the blue to desaturate. Okay. So you can see so far I've already, uh, I did like a zenithal, but then also covered in the brown. This is just uh, helps me get like a base tone down to build on top of instead of just sticking with a with a gray. Right. Evening Zaba. Evening. Uh, flea bidding. I don't know. Hi hi. All right. So need to make a. Gonna build some neutral colors here. So you can see without the yellow, this is like, oh, let me zoom this out. So you can see all the colors. Move that into position. There we go. Hi, Tito. So you can see without the yellow, this is way too red for a skin tone. So we have to add the Duralide yellow. And then this is um, still way too dark. So more white. You can see we get closer to skin tone, a little more yellow. Hi, Mark. And then by mixing some blue in, we get closer to these like neutral grayish tones that make for a good neutral skin tone color. So that little bit of uh, that little bit of the blue in the mix helps a lot to get a more natural kind of color. Yes, by the way, if you want to get the miniature for yourself, there's the link. All right, so we are going to attempt 
to paint this guy like uh, UFC fighter Justin Gaethje. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do before I get into like figuring out, you know, specifics on how to adjust the the sculpt to make him look more like Justin. Because we will have to use paint to in, like simulate some of the volumes to make it look more like him. Um, I'm just going to quickly get a sketch of like where my main lighting position is going to be. So normally I would do, you know, I'm kind of known for uh, these kind of more intense like shadows and lights uh, in terms of like directional lighting. But UFC, you know, when you're in the ring, you're in like an arena and it's very bright. Like there's a lot of light everywhere. So we're going to just go for a kind of general lighting source from above and then we'll make adjustments where we need to create a more uh, directional lighting if we want. Thanks. 309, 309. Appreciate it. Thanks for the prime mood. So you can see like this, this base layer is very dark. So I want to just create some general light and shadow. And then as we work up in the lights, we'll uh, create more form and volume to everything. But this is, this is more like a two-tone kind of general, this is where the lights are going to go, this is where the shadows are going to go. Okay. Uh, he has a beard, but I'm not going to paint the beard on yet. I will add the beard later. Hi, Jared. Okay. So just going around. Getting a, you know, filling in this in this space. We're going to end up covering majority of the uh, the under the bottom layer. And that's fine. Right, so somewhere like here on his chest, and, and I'm going to talk about this quite a bit, but um, so we have we have a form to his torso, right? You can see even on the, the zenithal, right? If I follow the zenithal, I just place lights where the, the zenithal can see. Okay. Notice that not every, a lot of the muscles connect, right? I'm going to paint where I see the zenithal, okay? Okay. 
All right, so just by doing that, you can see that a lot of these muscle groups uh, join together, right? And even under here, we don't get a super dark shadow of the chest right here, right? Because the, the chest muscle stretches out. Right? When he goes like this, that, that pec muscle doesn't, um, isn't like super defined underneath, okay? So even here in the obliques, right? Where where are the darkest shadows, right? They're like in here in the armpit, they're under here underneath the belt and way down here at the, the bottom, right? These have a lot of mid-tones to them. Now, some of these might go even brighter than this, but it's important to realize that's like, I don't want to do this thing called like what I would call muscle islands where I paint every single muscle, like every single abdominal, every single oblique, like they're like they're little. I mean, if I come in and I do this and I separate every single one of these muscles with this like super dark transition line, right? I create these little muscle islands. Okay. The skin is stretched across the muscles. It's We have to make a cohesive uh, form. And then, like, back in here, right, even back here, some light gets to. Right, so we'll have mid-tones. These will be on the darker side of the mid-tones. But they'll still receive light, right? So this, right, if we think about these values, this value back here is very similar to the value up here. Right, he does have a bit of a... The rib cage comes out and then it tucks back in. And so we'll get some dark shadows under here and here. But a lot of this stuff down here is very kind of general mid-tones. And then look up here, right? What, what happens up here? Okay, we're in the center of his chest, right? We don't have any, I don't see any of the black from the primer left here. This all reaches light. Okay, so like in here in the neck, right? You can see the light reaches right there. So just because it's recessed doesn't necessarily mean it's in shadow. Right, this shoulder, all of this connects in a form with each other. I need. These two parts connect, and then we'll use uh, different levels of light to create separation between, further separation between these elements. The, the important thing, right, is big, everything, everything, I, whenever I paint, it's big to small, right? I'm trying to look for the large forms first, okay? The torso is like a cylinder or like a oval shape, right? The arm is like a cylinder, right? And then I break it down into the smaller, the smaller forms. And if you can do that, your uh, skin will look much more natural, okay? So it's about creating a contrast across the entire element, right? Look at, look at the back where the zenithal is, right? Okay, if I do the same thing, 
right? All of these have lots of small variation in light and shadow. They're not, these little muscles of his back down here, they don't have a lot of light to them, right? So it's like this, maybe a little here, maybe a little there, this one, this one, but they need to connect. Then later, as I work, I can create small variations to uh, create some separation between these. So don't make your muscles live on their own islands. What's important here is I'm just getting a rough idea of where the light and shadow goes. Right, getting kind of the colors I want for the skin. Justin is a pretty, I would say a pretty pale dude. So we'll build the light up a lot more than this, and I might have to add more mid-tone in as I go, right? This is probably all way too dark, but it gives me a starting point. This is why it's just a sketch at this stage, right? On top of here, where do you, do you see any black up here? No, so I gotta cover all of this, okay? Oh, that's got to get covered back here on the neck, right? The arm. And then later we can, uh, if you know anything, a ring, right? The UFC ring or octagon. Uh, it's like a gray mat. So we're going to get a lot of that light. The, the, these arena lights make a huge amount of light. So we'll get a lot of bounce light from the mat that comes back up into the underneath the arm, down here on the bottom side of the forearm, right? So these will get a lot of bounce light, and we'll have to introduce those. But we can we can introduce those later. Up, Christian. Okay, so something like this, right? This is going to get light from above. And then these parts under here, maybe this gets just a, a touch of light. But then these parts under here will be uh, lit by, you know, the bounce light. The reason I like this uh, to do my kind of gradient like this, where I have this big pool instead of creating all these little, all these little small mixtures, is I can I can have this large mixture and create all these intermediate tones in like in between. And so this might not be the exact same color as this, but it's close enough. And as I layer on top of each other. We'll create lots of little nuances inside the skin. Sometimes I'll add some more orange. Sometimes I might add a little more of the blue to desaturate, right? If we're going to do that, that grayish ring underneath, maybe I add more blue to the bounce lights. None of this, right? The deltoid here is not, doesn't have any black on it. Right, 
point, but these these do down here. You know what, let's just go ahead and let's take some of the blue. All right, we'll take a little a little white and create kind of a bounce light. We are going to go up in light, but see, this is still, this isn't blue. It's still a skin tone, right? but it's more desaturated than this over here. And so I start to create a kind of gray, a gray tone. And then this will be, and I want this pretty dark, right? so I can make and a tonal black and slowly add gray to it. What's up, Jason? How are you doing, guys? Welcome to the stream, everyone. All right, so now I can start to create the bounce light of the ring underneath. I'm going to need a terminator here, and right? a terminator refers to the kind of shadow colors in between. That's your, that's your core shadow, right? Where you have the darkest part of your, your shape, right? So in this case, this would be the core shadow. And I'll, this will, what I'm going to, this will be brighter than this, but it gives you the, uh, the idea of like, okay, this will be light. This will be the core shadow. And then we'll have a bounce light here. Same with on the bicep here, right? We have a core shadow and then a bounce light. Some NRDs, some nerd is that nerds? I think you did. I think you brought the bot. So, how's everybody doing? What's everybody up to? Okay, get some some shadow under here, right? Some of this bounce light, and then these these bounce lights will also show. And then a little trick you can do actually is you can kind of flip the figure over like this. If you want to think about bounce lights, I know I know a lot of times people are used to painting light from above. So if you want to, if you want to rethink the way you think about bounce lights, you can actually kind of flip the figure on its, on its head and, uh, and, and reevaluate the volumes from below, right? Which now it becomes the top of the figure. All right, uh, where else are we going to have bounce light? So the bounce, he'll get another bounce light on the bottom of his jaw, but this bounce light is from his chest, right? So it's going to be more orangish than the, than the bounce light. Right, he'd get a little bounce light there on his Adam's apple. But you get uh, more, more light, um, more orangish light because it's bouncing off of his skin instead of the, the mat. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's push the light more. Okay, I need a little more of the yellow, a little more white. 
Okay, so the skin gets a little more orange. Okay, now we need to start thinking about where the le next level of light is, right? So still, this chest, the chest is like almost entirely in light. Okay, but maybe now this mid-tone that I've painted here becomes the shadow of, of this volume. Okay. This shape here. You do the, the arm here, disconnects, okay? Important to connect the, uh, the musculature. Okay, he's gonna get a lot of light here. So we're not only thinking about the volume as like this is a volume, we gotta think about this as a volume, right? So the cylinder of the torso plus the the, this shape of the torso, right? As it curves this way, but also curves this way. And depending on which way he's turned, right? If we turn him slightly this way, then this cylinder, the light goes from being more in front to slightly more this way. We just keep connecting and pushing the light where we need it. Do you pick a viewing angle, then decide on highlights and shadows from there? Well, the shadows are going to be general, but the highlights, those like final specular highlights, those are going to be based on viewing angle, right? Because there's two different kinds of lights. There's the light like there's normal light and shadow, you know, diffused light and shadow. My hand is a very diffused light and shadow. But if you look at me in the camera, right, this is a highlight. There's some oil on my skin, so you get a like a shine point. Those shines, those those are like those are what are going to change uh, depending on the viewing angle. Game delay. Thanks for the. The follow, appreciate it. Okay, this gets light. In here, we get some light. In the neck. Here, right. Fire arc one, thank you. Okay. Even though this is in recess, right? This is above, it gets quite a bit of light. We get some light here. We wanna connect these volumes, okay? That old cat, thanks for following. For everyone who just popped in, if you want to get this figure, there's a link for you. Tree, tree beard prints. Uh, thanks for following. Mark, it also comes with a great tutorial by El Maestro, Mark Masklans. I did, I started with a sort of Zenithal. It's a Zenithal that I then cover with, um, I covered with like a brown to give like a general tone to the underlying tone to the skin. And then I paint on top of the, the Zenithal is just a guide. I'm not like really using it. It'll get completely covered by the time I'm done. Okay. So all of this, right, this all faces upwards. These are all, this is all going to be in light. Okay, that's 
And it's still just a sketch, right? Like here, right? These, the, the change in plane is really not strong here. Some people would leave uh, this like very dark line that separates the deltoid from, from the upper arm, right? From the bicep and tricep, except, you know, there's the way it's facing, that's not really there. Here, the deltoid starts to round over and you get into shadow. Well, thanks, game delay. Appreciate it. Okay, this doesn't face very upwards, but we still have to go more up in light than this. So this will get some small light, but then when it curves this way, we get some more light. Okay. I'm just making marks right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to be perfect with anything. Uh, I actually also have a picture of Justin Gaethje, who I'm basing this on, like on my computer, so I can look at him. He does not have a very harsh, um, some people, he has a very rounded face. Some people have like a pretty steep hmm, transition between the temple and the forehead. He does not. Okay, so we're going to have to make that transition pretty soft if we want to make this look like him. If I really define that, it's going to make the, those, that plane change uh, very obvious, and, and we don't want that. I'm at a church den. Hi, Vincenzo. How are you doing? Uh, these, this is, this is my color palette at the moment. So, elfic blue, it's just a gray blue. Royal brown, because I don't have burnt umber. Uh, pink skin, because it's just a kind of reddish tone. Daryllide yellow, and white. You could use burnt umber, Indian yellow, alizarin crimson, and white, you could use, I mean, really, you can mix skin tones from, from a lot of things, but those are just, those just happen to be what I grabbed, right, it's not, I'm not like, I do like uh, Daryl Eyed Yellow quite a bit, but This isn't one of those things where it's like, this is, you should follow this formula, right? It's, it's just a, a dark brown, a red, uh, kind of yellow. You could use uh, warm yellow from Chimera instead. You could use orange and cold and cold yellow and mix the two, right? It's, it's more just, I have basically sort of the, the primaries, but I like, I like having a deep, reddish brown tree beard prince and paradigm implosion thanks for following Right, so this right, this arm mostly faces upwards. So you're not going to get it. The, we'll we'll do subtle amounts of definition when we go to do this arm. But for right now, I want to. I'm just focused on the larger forms, right? And 
and we're going to eventually like for the highlights because there are those really strong arena lights we're really going to push the highlights like on this figure so he'll, he'll and it, if he's been sweating after the fight like he'll get some really shiny spots on him okay and then here i'm going to start to just introduce some further mid-tones start to kill some of these super deep brown shadows on on the front of the torso because we don't want to go that dark all right this this like black here pretty much the only place that's going to show up is like underneath the belt and like maybe really deep in the armpit. And as I get closer to these like darker mid-tones, I want to use just a bit more red. He's, he's got a kind of reddish skin tone. Especially if he's been, you know, fighting. So it's like a lot of blood flow. Um... Like, let's show you two different pictures, right? If I take, if you look at, oh, geez. Uh, all right. Well, it doesn't want me to paste that. But if, if he's been fighting right, like, he's going to start to sweat and turn a little red, become flush. here under the neck this one we're going to start to get a little darker down here right but there's still a lot of ambient light in the in the scene so even these like really deep shadows in here right where we get some some shadow under his his head like even this is going to have ambient light to create shadows under here or to create, uh, you know, these ambient lights underneath the, the jaw. I mean, we don't have to go to black. Does this stuff make sense? Is this, uh... Do you ever get little bubbles in your paint when it dries? No. I've had it happen with a wash, but not... Not my normal paints. Right, so this starts to get a little more reddish. And then later, if we need decide we need to like glaze some more shadows, then we can do that. But Joe M N and Seraph Seraphims and. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Okay, gonna have a little more red by the elbow. Right now we start to, all of this tone here that's not black, that's more 
Uh, even if it's just dark brown, I'm going to start to get some of that. Right, like this part of his arm is in shadow, but it also has very high proximity to his uh, bicep, which is in light, right? So it's also going to get bounce light from, from his arm, right? If I go like this, okay, let me get in camera, right? Here, let's see. Okay, let me switch cameras real quick right so you can see like this like this light is super bright so the bottom of my arm isn't shadow but if i go like this right you can see that as i get close to my arm right oh, now you can kind of see that there's there's this bounce light from from my uh upper arm kind of on on my forearm. stopped using them a while ago, but I was also an ape at painting, so maybe now that I'm a given, I'll be able to make good use of them. I mean, honestly, I really don't think it matters. Like, Mark, if you're still here, like, you use a lot of Vallejo, right? I know I use a lot of Vallejo. Um, so, I don't think Mark just paints in, in, like, pure pigments. Um, I think it's more about the the kind of essence of the color than it is necessarily like having, you know, pure pigments. Okay, as his arm curves over here, get some shadow. So the main light is not right next to the belt. It's actually like more slightly forward on his forearm. Of his stomach, this is actually the the deepest part right here. And then we need to create like intermediate tones. Right, something like that. This kind of connects. Oh, this shape in here will get some light. I like to try and connect, connect the islands, dude. Bridge the islands. No muscle islands. All right, we're not drawing a comic book character. Right, where it's like black lines separating everything. Okay. Need to make the skin look stretched across. All right, so now let's grab a bit more of the yellow. We want a little bit of the red. There's probably too much red. A little more yellow. As we get closer to the lights, we want a very small amount of the blue to desaturate. Not a lot, just a, just a tiny amount. 
right? A lot more. Going to need more white for this. But we're still nowhere close. This is going to look really bright on his skin, but we're still not at white. Right. He, he's a pale guy. Right, so his chest is, is in a lot of light. And we have to ask how much, just how much light is in this scene. And if, if he's, you know, if he's in that arena lighting, it's a lot. Okay, so here we start to think about this is going to have very similar light to up here. This will be in a lot of light. This is going to have a little less. This will have a little less. Then this here is going to get quite a bit. All right. Don't want to overdefine the musculature. Okay. Now, parts of this are looking kind of red. A little too red for my taste, so I can grab a little of the, the orange and the, the royal brown mixed together, or the Daryl Light Yellow, and kind of create a glaze. But I'm going to go back over top of this. This will add some some more warmth to the the skin some of the yellow warmth and then i'll keep building on top right so now you can see here right like look here i've now pushed this bright white or this bright tone onto his onto his chest up here see how dark this what was earlier looked like a light has become, okay? It's relative contrast, right? This tone here, this is like the same as this down here, right? Or here it looks like a light, here it looks like a super dark shadow. So we can use different mid-tones to create shadows in areas of light. Don't just have to use the same shadow values everywhere. His chest is not very rounded, so. And so by pushing the light, it, now this feels like a more natural shadow in between. Why do you drag the brush into all the other colors in the palette? Does it have a meaning or is it more a thing you've always been doing? You mean like, why do I grab some of this and this? It's just, I'm creating intermediate mixtures. I'm, I'm finding um, middle tones, right? It's, it's all about finding these like grays in between. No, no, I want to find, I want, I want the colors to play with each other, right? I want to create 
these these subtle differences, right? This color is slightly different than that color, is different than this color. This one has just a little more red in it, so maybe it's more useful for somewhere where there might be a little more red, something like the elbow, right? Right? By by finding these these intermediate mixtures, I create much more variation across the skin. The skin is not perfectly, you know, one gradient. If you if you if you were to do something like this, where you were like, I'm gonna use this color for the lay, I'm gonna use this color, and then I'm gonna use, I don't know, a dark brown. Right? If you were to go like this, 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 and then uh, I don't know, this, right? If you were to just do this, everything would just look the same, right? There'd be no variation. It's like, I'm going to base coat with this, then go to this next, then go to this next, then go to this. It's just all the same, right? So by mixing different colors and having uh, subtle variations on each one, I create a much more um, interesting surface, Right, even on even on my skin, like I don't have the same color everywhere. Like my knuck, my fingertip is more red. This is more orange and yellow than this is more red. Like there, there's a lot of little variation. Like you know, all the variation in here, right? See how much now now look like you thought that that previous layer was bright. Like I make a new a new mixture now. And suddenly this tone that looked very bright before is not is not as bright, right? I've created this. Now there's this big gradient between the two, but the light up here is brighter than the light down here. You see just how massive of a difference that is. When when uh, you start to get like kind of sweaty or oily, the skin you can start to think about some of these shapes almost like uh, non-metallic, where it's like, oh, because this curve matches the the reflection point, you get some of these these like reflection patterns. This is why I uh, suggest learning NMM, even if you don't like the effect. Like you don't like painting it because it's it's very applicable to other materials also. You're basically more learning how reflections work than you are just learning how to paint metal. At least if you're learning 
not metallic in a way that is going over the the principles of non-metallic instead of just being like, oh, paint a gradient and then flip the sword over and paint a gradient the opposite way. Like, Sorry if that was shots fired towards anyone in particular, but it wasn't intended to be. Right, so now that we have these like little midtones, and I'm going to increase the light in here more, this is all going to come way up. But as we, as we create these little intermediate tones, now there's this very subtle midtone shadow that separates these two muscles instead of before, if or if we did it the other way where we just left this like really dark line uh, that makes it not look right. So now maybe, okay, so now I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, yeah, there's a lot of nice light up at the top. Okay, this has a lot of nice light. This is this will go even brighter at one point. Um, I get to like the final specular reflection, but that'll be very small, right? So now this stuff down here, the, well, this looks too dark, right? So we've got to use a mid-tone. to start to introduce some more light down here so that we can make these surfaces a little closer together. Yes, this is ba I'm doing this based on uh, Justin Gaethje. But a lot of that will come into play when we do the the tattoos and the more of the face. See you, Lucas. So this down there here is way too dark now. All right, you can grab some of this, some of this together. And it'll, it'll create this almost like purplish tone. Right, watch, because this blue, and this is very, it looks brown, but it's real, it's very red. All right, as we mix these two together, and this blue has a bit of white in it, right? So we get this kind of like dark lilac brown. Yeah, the BMF champ. Thanks, Lucas. Glad you like it. All right. So now we can get, see, this has like the slight purplish tone. Creates a really nice... And a shadow under here. 
Right, that's not pure black. We don't need pure black. It's pretty odd to see pure black anywhere anyways. Okay, now we need a intermediate. This is going to be a very sharp um, transition, but it, we don't want it like perfect, right? We don't want it like a, you know, hard edge, but it does need to have Uh, it's we don't want it to be like really rounded over because he's not he's not shaped like that and he doesn't have Arnold Schwarzenegger chest that's like Okay, so the same, same deal, we start to create some more shape in here, All right, really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably over define the rib cage a little bit, and then as I refine, right, then I'll slowly begin to make these more one shape and surface. Yeah. Starting to look like something now. Okay. And we can use glazes and we'll, we'll do a lot of this later. Like this is general uh, later refinement stuff, but just using the, we can use lots of glazes later to create even more uh, subtle variation. Right, so now I'm looking here, and this probably needs to all come up a little bit, so I'll find a little thinner, right? And I need to make this part of the torso feel a little more round, so I need a bit more light in this column, right? to create this, this shape of his stomach. His torso is a, a continuous thing. Who's that? DK Gaming, eighty-eight. Hello, hello. Okay. All right. I'll start to push the light a little more in certain parts. It's a very back and forth process, but also very freeform, right? I'm not like, for me, anyways, it, it's, there's no like, do this, then do this, then do this, right? And you'll get perfect, like, skin, like, it just doesn't work that way, right? It's about 
making little little adjustments, right? We make big sweeping brush strokes that kind of define the regions first, and then we make small adjustments as we go. Is this stuff helpful to you guys? Does this like change the way you think about musculature at all? Yes, no, maybe I put everyone to sleep. Cool. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad this is full. If, if there's one real like really important thing I can I can try and stress, it's that the body is you know it's got bigger shapes first and then small shapes right. Or if you want one, here's the one thing pro painters won't tell you. Basically, don't paint the, your darkest <laughs> shadows in between every single ab. Okay, don't paint them in the striations of the, the deltoid. Don't, you know. Miguel, we'll get to that later. That's that's a detail step, right? We we got to get everything general lighting and stuff first. When we go to do like tattoos, then we'll do little like sweat details and stuff.
I mean, besides being a fan of the subject matter, I do find this uh, figure very interesting for, like, an anatomical study. Um, so, I think it's quite nice. It's a, it's a bit more... on the realistic side of an athletic person than what you, we would typically get from like a uh, very fantasy like Conan super bodybuilder sort of a figure than that, that might be more typical in, in uh, fantasy figures. Adios. Is that Tenix and Tundil Bola Bol of a Derrite? Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Be in Australia or something? Got the Aussies coming in? That's very morning, then. <laughs> One seventeen in the morning. Okay, let's grab some of this intermediate color, right? We can start to do the rest of his forearm. Hey, Jonas. Thank you. I'm glad you like the, like, Space Wolf me. Oh, geez. Well, hi, Erg. Yeah, I don't know where... I think Dave Caldwell's in Perth? And he wakes up at, like, four in the afternoon for me. But I think he's a bit of an early bird. But, uh, no, that's... Seven, I don't know, Perth's on the, Perth's on the West Coast, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think he just wakes up early. He's the opposite of me. He's the opposite side of the world, and I think we, uh, have very sim quite overlapping sleep schedules. I 
All right, so this shoulder, right, if the if the light is this way, this shoulder is not going to get as much light as this. So this won't get a lot of specular reflections, but we can introduce um, specular, light, like a separate specular lights, either from a different angle or just like you would on non-metallic, right, where you have to choose another viewing angle and introduce more lights. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting uh, generally like pretty happy. Yes, there's a lot of work to do on his neck, but I haven't quite decided how I want to do the shadows on his neck yet. If I want to do a cast shadow or not, probably would be better just to fill some of this in and then decide if I want to do a cast, uh, a subtle cast shadow. To, to do that if I want. Okay. A lot of this is going to get covered by a beard, but we want a good underlying layer for the beard. Most of this will be hair, so we'll just put a quick base coat. We need to paint his ears too, but that's going to be a whole thing because he's got wicked cauliflower ear. So a lot of this right now, we can just kind of place some color down. Right, killing the, killing that undercoat. But it does, you know, show through a little bit. That's why I like to undercoat with brown. Uh, if I'm doing skin or a warm. more warm lighting, okay? Build back up our midtone so we've got a nice pool of it that we can pull from, right? So we make a big mixture and then we can make new mixtures off of that mixture, create lots of little intermediate mixtures. Right? There we can zoom in. Zoom in a little for this.
bit more red, just a touch in the, the cheeks. And like I said, he's got a very rounded face. Um, let's see if I can't find some picture for you guys that looks pretty good. Uh, here we go. There's a picture of Justin. So you can kind of know who we're, who I'm trying to base this on. He's got a, a quite rounded jawline and it's not like super gaunt that, that you see a lot of fighters get when they cut a lot of weight. Yeah, he's got a uh, he's got some interesting features. Like he, the one of the things that really matches to this figure is his eyebrows. Like his brow shape is like, I can't do that. He's got those like very upturned like eyebrows. Um, where I have like a bit more like straight across or slanted. His or is have these like more upturned. Oh, on this figure, yes, it is. And we will do, we will do it like he's got a bruise later, but yeah, it's, it's basically shut. He went through a war. This wasn't a one-punch knockout fight. Another distinguishing feature Justin has is that he's got uh, this, like, split in his upper lip. So 
So that will be a small detail we have to add. He also has quite pink lips. And a very reddish, reddish beard. Okay, so let's add some more light. Really, uh, let me see if I can real quick. Let me see if I can also find a picture of him smiling for you guys. The kind of... Eh, here we go. Can I get a higher res version of that, please? Eh, it took me to a, a reel or something. Open, open image in new tab. Here we go. Copy image. Or copy image address. Right. So if you look at that one, he's got a very uh, this this like shape here of his mouth, right? This is very defined on him. And it is not very defined on the figure. So we're going to have to like basically paint paint that on. And I'll give you guys a little secret. I actually did some sculpting to his jawline knowing that I was going to paint uh, this figure like him before I, I primed it, but to fill out his his cheeks and jawline a little bit. All right, so we've gotta we've gotta create that shape there. The nasal fold, which goes up and around the nostril, by the way. It doesn't go to the side of the nostril. It doesn't stop at the bottom of the nose. Okay. It goes up. And he's got a little bit of a, a dimple thing going on. All right, so we might have to create volumes that aren't necessarily there. To get the representation that we want, right? I also sculpted a mouth guard on him that's not on the uh, on the actual figure. He's the figure's missing a tooth. I wanted to do. Uh, I did not want him missing a tooth, so I sculpted a mouth guard. But I mean, that's a very simple modification to just add some uh basically make his teeth one solid thing it was like one piece of putty and you just 
go across the front teeth. Okay, so we can start to make his, his face quite rounded and immediately just with like introducing some small small details that aren't sculpted, like me just adding a little a little dimple right here can kind of change the face shape, right? So painting this line and adding a little dimple right here. Re uh can uh, adjust the shape quite a bit, depending on how high, right? I'll show you on this side, right? So here, I've made his cheek kind of large, right? Oh, I use Milliput, but if I were to paint his cheek like this, let's, let's grab a, a darkish color so you can see what I'm talking about. If I were to adjust the shadows and kind of go something like this, right? I can I can rate the now this is a huge exaggeration, but by painting a little a little more shadow here, I can raise his his cheekbones, right? I can make him appear more gaunt just by painting a little bit deeper shadows. Now, like I said, that's a huge exaggeration of, of how much you would need to do that. But, but by doing this and lowering it, you know, I make him uh, closer to Justin where Justin's, Justin's cheekbones are, right? He doesn't have very high cheekbones. They're, they're kind of more like down here. And he's not super gaunt, so we want this shape to be more rounded, right? He's got a little bit, you know, he's not, he's definitely not fat. So he's got some, some, uh, shape to his cheeks, but they're more subtle than say, if you look at a picture of like, uh, who, who like Charles Oliveira, who Mark did his, uh, version based on the, the box art of this figure is, you know, Charles Oliveira is, is very skinny. Right, so immediately it starts to look a little more like him. And then when we do, when we do the beard, and the hair, it'll all start to add up to create an effect that it's a bit more similar. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back in a few minutes and uh, we'll continue on. What were you doing? What were you painting? We're painting 
the, this dude, this MMA fighter man. If anybody's a a uh, fan of UFC, you might know who we're trying to base it on, or I'm trying to base it on. It's maybe a little early to tell, but. I'm good. Uh, well, it finally happened. I got a box full of stuff and I got to stop being a watercolor painter who likes looking at minis and actually paint minis for a World Bank account. Hey man, I feel you. No, it's not me. I, I already painted a me. All right. I'm, I'm not doing another version of me. I literally posted. You guys want to see me? Hold on. Real quick, I'll grab it. If you didn't see the Instagram post earlier today. Here's the Space Wolf me. With a, a big old wolf symbol. So it's Celtic knot stuff. It's fun. It was very odd to paint a version of yourself, but Bubba Buckets and Ross Scofi? Hello, LJ Stark Greenwood. Thanks for the follow, everyone. We are no, we are, we are, I'm basing this off a, uh, an actual, an actual USC fighter. Right. Here, all right, so here we want to get, because the angle is, we're going slightly off center, right? We're not going dead center. When slightly off center, we're going to focus a little more light on the right side of his face than on the left. Okay, not by a ton, but a bit. You're a watercolor artist. They're the same brushes. Every miniature painter just uses watercolor brushes. So here he's got quite a bit of light that kind of runs like this. When trying to do a portraiture, it's, it's important to look at reference, okay? It's really important to look at reference and not just... Right, I'm, I'm trying to paint a person on top of a sculpt that is not exactly like him, okay? So I have to make some changes to the, the, the volumes of the sculpt in order to better represent the, the person that I'm trying to paint. It's not Patty Pimblet, no. Mm. 
No, I don't think any. I don't think people would know who this is unless you were like a uh, like an avid fan of UFC. He's not like a household name like Conor McGregor or something. Nope. Hi, Richard. Okay, and then here, right, we come down the cheek, get some of the jawline. Like I said, he has a very uh, rounded jaw, so we don't want too much cheekbone in here. Want a little bit, but not, not so much that it's like ultra defined. Okay, up in this area. We don't need any pure blacks. Maybe. Maybe I am, Richard. Possibly. Okay. So we just keep pushing the light. And as we, you know, just, this is just like on the, uh, the stomach, right? We're, we're right now, we're just trying to get the volumes looking right. Make it past the squint test. Okay. If we can make it past the squint test. Then we can start to do more general refinement stuff. See, he doesn't have this like really harsh uh, shadow shape here. Patriotic, hello. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm using. This is a Kalinske.
Okay, I want just a little more orange in his skin tone. That's fine. You can do that. You don't have to use the same brushes. Just letting you know, you know, like if there's a brush you're comfortable with, it's the it's the same same stuff, same hair. He has a very wide bridge to his nose, so I'm going to actually extend the light over some onto the uh, the shadow side. Because he has that kind of wider bridge. He is, he is the BMF champ. He was a former world champion, or interim world champion. You just keep naming. Do you only know British fighters? Tom Aspinall, Patty Pemblet. <laughs> No, he's American. Okay, so on the jaw here, right? Don't... Well, it, it doesn't matter that much because we're going to do the beard anyways, but I'm going to paint him as if he doesn't have a beard. Right for now. Then I'm going to do a beard over top before I go crazy on refinement. But you don't want a hard edge, right, on the jawline. People don't have perfectly chiseled jaws, okay? There is, there is some, like, roundness to the jaw. Hey, 
Okay, so you can see here, like, even that shadow right now is maybe a little heavy for his face structure. So I can tone that down a little bit. It's still there, right? You can still see it, but it's not, it's not like exaggerated like it was. Getting close, closer to the general face shape I'm looking for. All right, what else, what else? He does not have... Hey, there you go, Brangan. You got it. See uh, Jonas. He does not have a super defined, uh, like, mm, I don't know, even know what to call this like overhang to his bottom lip. So the shadow under his bottom lip does not need to be like super defined. What do you think, though? Does it look like him at all? Even from a, like, rough starting point? And we're gonna, we're gonna just glaze some red into his nose. We're gonna tone this way down, don't worry. This looks, it's gonna look ridiculous for a minute, but we'll, we're just adding some color. And then we'll, when we paint back over top of it, it'll uh, soften this out. I'm just creating a, a sort of undertone to build on top of. I'm going to do the same with a little bit of yellow in his forehead. do this so that I can create, uh, right, as I layer on top of these, yeah, hey Justin, he seems like a nice guy, 
He, he uh, apparently hits like a truck. You are game delay. That is, in fact, what is happening. Evening, Mini Man, sir. Right, so I had a little light to his or some color to his skin so that now when I come back and I layer on top in thinner layers right as we slowly begin to to build up the volumes more and begin to refine some of that underlying color shows through it's or it stays in the midtones and we can create a uh, Nice little subtle variation in the skin where we want where we want some additional color, You're welcome. I'm glad that you hopefully find it helpful and can implement it into your workflow. Or even if it just, you know, makes you think a little different about painting, then that's uh, a, I consider that a win. All right, so here, right now, we're really starting to push some of the light. All right, smaller marks. Now I can start to create some some smaller uh, micro volumes. See that little bit of red that still shows through on his nose. Okay. Now he has a pretty he has a pretty strong plane shift from the side of his nose to the uh the cheeks. Alright. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let that transition be a little bit stronger. Just to create that kind of sh shadow to the side of his nose. Who's that? This searching. Hello. Thanks for following. Welcome.
I'm gonna like make a little bit of a cast shadow under the nose. Yes, I am. Oh, uh, it, at least one, probably not more than that. I don't, I don't uh, have that much interest in in uh, the thirty-two mil stuff for display painting wise. Um, I like to paint them for gaming miniatures, but for, for display stuff, not really, it's not really my thing. I'd much rather paint something like this for a display figure. Okay. So this shape, right? The, the nasal fold. We need to, no, I have no interest in eight millimeter. Oh, geez, it's tiny. No, thanks. Uh, we need to round this over a little bit. All right, even though it's, it's like a line, it's still not like It's not, it's not a perfect fold or anything. So we soften that. Everything about this is about creating these little subtle Subtle marks. Uh, you'd be surprised. And there are no stuff. There's a guy that goes to Monty. I don't, I don't remember his name, but he paints like eight millimeter or eleven millimeter, something like that. Uh, soccer teams, and he does like all the jerseys numbers and everything, it's crazy. Godchan99, hello. He has quite rounded uh, brow here, and we are going to add some some wrinkles to the forehead. Like when he when you smile, you get a little couple lines that go across. It's not again; these are micro volumes, so I'm trying to be very subtle with these shapes. Right, so something like, what has he got? One, two, three, like three. So just by creating a light. Well, let me get it so you guys can actually see it. Huh? Mm. 
So by doing something like that, I can create those those little folds in the forehead, and they don't need, you know, more definition than that. Uh, the weather is warm. It was like 20 degrees last night, and it was like 70 degrees today. I was just trying to kill my sinuses. got it out for me. I heard it was pretty cold. I know Northern Virginia got some snow. We did not. It was just cold. Wasn't wet enough. Right, so here you can see like I'm, I'm using thin layers to just create subtle uh, variations, right? I'm just trying to make small adjustments, right? I might actually consider, if I take a little of the yellow, add a little yellow to this, this mixture, and right? we get a little closer to like a brown. Okay, and here. Add a little of this brown to the, the side of the head. That was, uh, yeah. The Sam's in Wisconsin, right? Like, I'd expect there to get snow. That makes sense. Portland, Oregon, getting, you know, 10 inches or whatever it was, is, like, pretty unusual. And I don't need to mess with oh, too much going over this way because he's going to, I'm going to have to paint his hairline.
Oh yeah, he's got some wicked cauliflower here. We're gonna have to paint that too. The very key uh, detail of this figure. Sad that he does not have a proper UFC belt uh, because copyright. Mark, I'm sure, did not want to face the UFC lawyers for putting their actual logo on his model, but we can, you know, approximate it. Oh, I'm not doing the BMF belt. I'm doing I'm doing the interim when he was interim belt. I'll do the gold. The gold strap. I'm not I'm not into the uh the silly silver. I don't even know if it's silver. It's like steel or something. Okay, we'll make some little adjustments to the cheek over here. All right, so everything is right. So at this stage, like, I'm pretty happy with like the rough sketch of the face. I need to do the lips, but. Let's go ahead and add some color here. How are those? I know Cool Mini are not makes them, but are they, are they the like board game plastic or are they like legit plastic minis, like injection molded? All right, this is a really tiny detail that I will attempt to show you guys. So here in the, the nasal fold, the thing I like to do is I want to grab some light value. And I'm going to try and do this with the hand kind of in the way. So I can't, uh, it can be pretty hard to hit this line but you want to I like to try and bridge the nose like that what you can do is you can you can paint that little fold there 
you paint the little light like in the fold and then you come back if it's too wide you come back with that shadow color and you thin it out all right so that line connects from the nostril to the the front all right we're bridging Boo, 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 boo. Hello. Very small. But those subtle details is like what makes the difference, right? Here, this, this very small wrinkle here, and then we can, right? These are like little wrinkles, little wrinkles, little dimples. Uh, it is not printed. It is, well, I don't know who, I mean, it is. It's a 3D sculpt by Hugo Briones, but if you want, uh, this is produced by Masklon's Miniatures, as in Mark Masklon. If you want to pick up a copy of this figure, by there, it also comes with a, a whole tutorial by Mark also. The Sleepy Gorilla. Hello. Welcome and boo 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 boo. I don't know if that's the correct amount of boos, but okay. No, I want. Uh, what do I want? I'm gonna grab some of this. This is just like a, I don't know, express color. It's like a sepia kind of tone. It's not as heavy as an ink though. All right? You can see here. Right? I'm gonna kind of spread it out. It's, it's quite yellow. It's like a yellowish brown. I'm gonna use that just to real thin. Just add some more color into the skin and kind of push some of these shadows a little bit. You keep saying your buddy and he submitted, he submitted Charles Oliveira. Who, who is this guy? Huh? Are you friends with Islam Makachev? Friends with Gordon Ryan? Oh, Ricardo Lamas, yeah, okay. I am familiar with Ricardo. So you got to get one of these and paint them up like that.
All right. Yeah, it's not that hard. No, no, no. This is so it's it's a generic person, right? The the figure is a generic sculpt. But I am doing him. I am attempting to paint him to look like Justin Gaethje. I'm doing my best to alter the figure a little bit in subtle ways to, to try and uh, look a bit more like Justin Gaethje. Now I am going to um, paint the beard on him, which should help some. Give him Justin's red beard. And you know, the bad boy eyes tattoo on his stomach will probably help also. But that's for later. We're not there yet. Okay. Those are, those are final details. Here's another little one. Notice I didn't put a big line here. This is a very common kind of mistake to make. People put this like dark line like right there in the corner of the nose. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so don't do that. Or where the, the nose, the plane of the nose changes from the cheek to the, the side of the nose. I'll do it. We want his bridge to be a little, like I said, he's got a little bit of a wider bridge to his nose. He has quite the flat nose, like he's been punched in it a few times. He's fought more safe. He's fought safer more recently. When he started in the UFC, he was a madman. But he also had, like, what was it? Six out of his first eight fights or something, he won a performance of the night bonus. The dude was a 50k making machine. He's like, give me that, give me that bonus. Brusos, Bruxos, Magic Con Heroes, and Fresh Fuzzy Freddy, Freddy, and the Sleepy Gr Sleepy Gorilla. How am I missing? Am I missing some of these, or am I just forgetting that I'm saying them? Thanks for following everyone.
Heavy Dubby. Hello, welcome, welcome. All right, let's continue with the lips. Thanks. All right, he, like I said, he has quite, he's got very pink lips for a, very pretty lips. You know, besides the split in his upper lip, which we will paint. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just kind of over highlight the lip and then I'll glaze some color into it and then I'll uh, knock it back down. Came to the artistic liberty. Okay, and then the lower lip. I don't know what kind of mouth guard he wears. I've seen pictures of it. I tried looking up pictures of it and it's like either got some writing on it or it's 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 a little too difficult to tell in photograph. Um like there's a bit too much noise on it. So I think I'll go with something a little more simple. To see how I just used a little bit of the this this pink skin to just glaze back over top of the lips create some color right he doesn't have scarlet lips I don't want lipstick but he definitely has very pink lips compared to his skin tone I'm assuming that means you're a genie. Or something else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know what crack means. So I'm just going to give him just like a kind of generic gray over the top of him or over the mouth guard real quick. 
King of Kings. Okay. Yeah, the Rey de Reyes. Uh, more fantastical creatures, movies. I mean, like Lord of the Rings, Magic the Gathering. Um, and there's some pretty famous fantasy artists, you know. Warcraft. Sometimes you can use stuff like lizards as, as a reference for goblins. Like, you know, you could just get some kind of weird animals that have different unusual skin. Little Cucaracha and Lukita, <laughs> Lukita Tata. Hello. So here, on the upper lip, so I've got this kind of dark line, I want to create this sort of shape like this, right, and taper that down. Then in the corner of the mouth, high space toy. I mean, he doesn't have a super strong upper lip. What he does have though is this. He's got like a, a split in his upper lip. So we have to paint that. I assume he had his lip busted at some point. And it is quite, uh, Defined. Yes, the the actual so the, normally the figure uh, does not have a mouth guard. He has, uh, but he has a missing tooth, and I I didn't like that so easy enough to roll out a thin piece of putty and just over top of his front teeth and create a, uh, a mouth guard. Put him. Hello. Thanks. Appreciate that. And I don't even know if this is the color I'm going to want it, but I'm just giving him something to create, you know, just to separate it for now so I can see it's there. 
Maybe I change the color later, depending on what color I want to do is trunks and glove gloves, but it's a, uh, that'll work. And it took like two seconds. You want to know how I started painting? I started painting. Oh, well, I have an art background. I drew a lot when I was young. Um, then I did Gundams and when I was like young through my teenage years and then in my early-ish 20s, yeah, like my mid, I will say mid-20s, my, a buddy of mine introduced me to Warhammer 40k because he figured I would like a game where I can, you know, build and paint models. So that's how I got into miniatures. Hello, official trickster. How are you? All right. What else? What else? What else? Let's take a little bit of this guy. I'm going to slightly adjust the shadow here. Just, just a little bit. Death Guard was my first army, then I got into, then I played Salamanders, and then I had a small Grey Knights army. Didn't ever really painted much of them, I kind of quit soon after that. Um... And then I got into War Machine and Hordes. And that was kind of the big game I played for a while. Which eventually led me to attending their convention. And then uh, entering their painting contest and blah, 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 blah. Do I have any tips on becoming a better painter? I have one big tip. Okay. Here's the big tip. Practice. Which... Sounds very generic, right? Oh, practice, duh. Right. But the, the big, it's not just about painting. It's not just about hours, right? You can sit there and paint a whole Warhammer 40k army, blah, 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 for however long. And you're not necessarily going to improve. Intentional practice is really the key, right? If you, if you want to improve intentional practice, okay? That means study, looking at reference, trying to understand, practicing specific techniques, right? That's intentional practice.
painting the same space marine over and over again is only going to, I mean, it might teach you some brush control, you might get faster, but it's not going to really teach you anything about painting because you're not trying anything new, you're not pushing yourself. Okay. You have to constantly get outside your comfort zone, try new things, and, and push your skills. That's my tip for being a better paint, miniature painter, or any kind of painter, or pretty much, you know, whatever. Get out of your, get out of your comfort zone. and focus on intentional practice. Oh, Eric. Evening, everyone. Hi, Penguin Shark Minis. How are you? Okay, so beard time. All right, I could do the hair too. I just have to paint the ears, but I want to get the at least uh, a bit of his beard on him so I can start to like see what he looks, what it looks like with that. He has a very red beard. So I'm going to grab Calvary Brown. It's like quite red and orange. Gagey and I definitely do not have the same beer. <laughs> His is much more red than I than mine is, and also uh, mine's a little longer. Okay, so. His beard is really like this color, but I can't just mix this color with white. It won't work. Okay, so I have to mix it with a little of this guy. I can even grab a little of this to darken it even more. We'll grab just a touch of the blue to desaturate it a bit. We don't want it like pure. brown. Like this is too, if I did that, it's too red. Okay, so I need to mix a brown that's a little closer. Okay. And then I want to, I'm looking at the picture of him, by the way. So his beard is first is like really thick around, um, the his like neck and everything so this is all quite dark so I really can paint like the the chin kind of underneath here I might need actually a a bit of black just to darken this some more Where's my black? Uh, hello? How many years of painting have I, have I been? I've been painting for 15 years. Uh, competitively since 2017. Official trickster and uh, Achurita. Hello. Welcome. Right, so I want to get, let me zoom out just a touch. So unless he has it very short, it tends to be kind of like this. He's got a bit more of a, a kind of chin, chin strappy beard. And then he tends to 
seems like he tends to cut it uh, like real short on the sides. It kind of fades out at the top. So we're just going to place where it's thickest, and it's a bit thicker here, near like the corner of the mouth. Okay, something like that. And then a bit more on the chin. Okay. So that gives me like the rough shape. Now I've got to get more of this like black brown underneath where it's very dark his beard really goes to like the neckline Okay, then I'm going to grab a little of the yellow, add that in. I'm just going to turn this a little bit more orange. Hi, Doms. So trying to be pretty uh, perpendicular to the surface. Let me pull this down just a touch because I have to get very close to the figure to see this and be very controlled. I'm going to create little hashes, little tiny strokes, and slowly begin to bring it upwards until it fades away into the skin. Okay, I think I see that people do like a lot of times with beards that I'm like, yeah, that's not really how beards work is they paint, they have this very defined like dark line along the beard. You know, the hairs are more sparse as it starts to fade away, right? And then it just kind of fades off into the skin. Hi, In The Sky VT, hello. Yeah, I also want to try and be not perfectly linear with with my brush strokes. Like I wanna want some of them to be to like change angles and stuff. And then on this side of his face, I'm probably going to have to go darker. And 
Another thing I'm noticing is he doesn't really have this, the soul patch. That was way too thick. I'll try and fix that. Here we go. What do you like the most when doing miniature painting? What do I, like, what do I like to paint the most? What's my favorite thing to, to paint? Hmm, that's tough. That's interesting. Uh, I like, I like NMM a lot of the time, sometimes, but sometimes it can be kind of annoying if the shape is like really, really weird. Um, I mean, probably faces is like the most fun thing to paint. musculature, you know. I do like painting fur. Uh, fur is like a love hate. I either love painting fur and hair or I hate it. It depends on the sculpt. I am pretty much a self-taught other than uh, for about a year, I did some private coaching with Alfonso Giraldez. Uh, otherwise known as Banshee, he, when I reached a point where I was like, I don't think I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was improving as much so uh he definitely helped me like take a step up Hello, Oculus Rain. How are you? Okay, we can mix just a little bit of skin tone into this. For these kind of like really thin hairs that are close to this uh, skin transition and they'll really start to like taper these out. Zoom so you guys can see see this a little better. 
I really want to make sure this is like nice and fluid. Something kind of like that. Now it needs more refinement, needs more shape. I would do this like probably two, three times, right? The more you layer it on top of each other, the more little hairs you can get in there. I'm just throw this on palette just because it's convenient to have. All right? You create more, more little layers. I make acres here. Hello. Uh, this is a chimera brush and it's honestly not quite making it as thin as I want. Normally I would use like a brand new brush to do this. Um, really like, okay, so this is a size four, right? This thing's huge. But if a brush is good, the size doesn't really matter. Let me add just a little white and yellow to this so you guys can see it a little more. Make a little orange or right. If the brush is good, and your control is good, even with a, this size four, I can create these super, super tiny little lines, right? So it's more about the fluidity and the, the condition of your brush than like anything else. All right, if you got a good point on there, you can get, you can get really thin little lines. How often do you end up getting new brushes? Quite often, because this is my job. Um, I paint every day. Uh, how now? I think the better question would be, how often do I grab a new brush? Mm, maybe once, if it's a big project, maybe once a project. If it's a smaller project, it might last like a 32 mil. Yeah, a brand new brush might last three or four projects, right? But that new brush doesn't get retired, right? I don't just throw it away. It becomes a, uh, you know, if I, I find another use for it. But I get new brushes pretty often. Before Artis Opus sent me brushes, it was my number one expense. Okay, so I think this is 
looking pretty good. His beard becomes more patchy as we uh, get onto the cheek, right? So a few less hairs. Yeah, dude, a good brush goes a long way, man. Like I don't I don't like fighting with my brushes. And I, I've I've known to do that also, where like I'll use a brush for longer than it's good for. I get my old man's on. Is so I can see that really tiny detail, right? Then go around and do this a whole bunch until you end up, see, like here. See how thin those lines get, right? I just do this over and over and over again until I get uh, to the the point I want. Here I might grab a hot, like a lighter color and come back and layer on top. Try and change my stroke direction. You really can start to uh, create some really, really, really tiny texture. Another thing I'll do is, all right, so, right, I feel pretty good about like this side, but this side looks a little thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the skin tone. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it at the top.
and that kind of creates those right makes it makes that transition even more subtle get some of the patchiness of his chin maybe he has like a few little you know stubbly hairs that grow right here i can do little dots and stuff too to create to create like really tiny hairs but yeah, so start to create, you know, the beard shape. And then I just keep doing this and I keep layering and layering and layering until uh, it's as thick as I want or as thin as I want. Like thick as in how dense the beard is. Till I get it just the right color and and shape. Yeah. All right. Hello, Uzliv. Hi. Welcome. It is Justin Gaethje. All right, we're we're nailing it. It's, we're getting uh, people are. I mean, the sculpt is not actually Justin Gaethje, but I'm trying to make it look like Justin Gaethje. So, apparently, I'm going to call that a success that someone popped in and was just like, oh, is that Justin Gaethje? So, got it. Well, I think that's... A good stopping point for today. <laughs> no. No, he can buy it from me. <laughs> I don't believe I don't I don't buy into that giving celebrities crap stuff. No nah, man. I get enough free crap. They don't need free work from me too. Who's on? Uh, all right. Let's see who's streaming. I mean, I guess we could just do our standard. How many hours? Uh, I didn't sculpt it. No idea what it. Speaking of which. So I didn't, I didn't sculpt it. You can get the figure from here. Um, check out, check out Masculine's Miniatures. Uh, if you want to order one and follow along, helps him out. He's a small producer, you know. Uh, but yeah, this was three hours, three, three hours and 20 minutes of painting so far. So... 
still have a lot to do, right? Like the back, you know, we got to, there, there's a whole lot of work still to go, but we're making, we're making, uh, we're making some progress, some progress. All right, let's raid Walter. Yes, I know Charles Oliveira. That is who Mark sculpted it off of. <laughs> 